Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Palato of MediaMonarchy.com. So-called super rich are building underground panic mansions. We got that story, plus police abusing confidential databases all over America. But first, the United Nations and China agree on a Silk Road Initiative cooperation. China has agreed to coordinate with the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, in implementing its One Belt, One Road initiative focused on Eurasian economic development and integration. The two sides signed a Memorandum of Understanding, which focuses on increased collaboration between the UNDP 2030 agenda. Hey, there it is again for sustainable development and the One Belt, One Road initiative within a strategic framework on the sidelines of the recent 71st UN General Assembly, the UNDP said in a statement. In 2013, China's President Xi Jinping proposed the construction of a new Silk Road to facilitate the direct flow of goods from the Pacific Ocean to the Baltic Sea. The project is intended to connect China with Europe and strengthen economic ties between Asia, Europe, and the Gulf states. James, when I dug back into our archives, all I could see us talking about as far as Silk Road went was Ross Ulbricht and the dark web. Bring us up to date on the Silk Road situation as it confers to China. Well, if people want more information on it, I did write an article uh, earlier this year, uh, China's Trillion Dollar Gamble, the New Silk Road. And in that, I go through the, uh, the, the trillion dollars of infrastructure investment that they're going to be pumping into this over the coming decades, really, as they try to build the, up this transportation infrastructure for trading around the world. But it's much more than that. It's about um, essentially the, the creation of regional government and free trade re- deals um, a- along the lines of everything that people detest about TPP and these types of deals. It's just that China is forming uh, a sort of less, uh, less formally structured um, uh, version of that. But it's got all of the same aspects of this kind of regional government, uh, sharing government data and statistics and harmonizing regulations and fostering cross-border cooperation in law enforcement. All of these are aspects of what this is ultimately going to be. So it's no surprise that the UN is pimping for it, and in fact has been for a couple of years now. Um, You can go back to 2014. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development has this whole investment guide to the Silk Road where they're basically pimping this idea and, oh, isn't it so great? And look at all the Look at all the oodles of money that you, you'll be able to make if you invest in this area of the globe as it starts to expand, which is probably true. But again, it's because this fits in perfectly with things like the 2030 agenda, that China is absolutely in bed with these uh, with the global government in general. Um, they're just a different wing of it, a different aspect of it. They're going to be the good cop in the good cop, bad cop, I guess. It's better than U.S. NATO empire. Well, let's have a Chinese empire. Um so this is this is how we have to situate this. Ultimately, this is about much more than just a trading infrastructure. This is about the 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 kind of the uh, what do you say the circulatory system for a regional government of some sort, and the regional government gets built on top of this infrastructure. Well, and as you note, China's prominence. I think you know they have that most favored nation status. It's why Rockefellers have always been so invested in China. It's why they get all the events, all the conferences, all the Olympics, all those sorts of things. And I think, you know, the words are always important. Of course, Silk Road pretty obviously tapping into kind of old school words, making it sort of new again for a new world, if you will. But also, as you were reading off those words, like harmonizing, whenever we hear those words, harmonizing is great in art and music, but whenever you hear it coming out of government, you know, it's always going to be a bad situation. Our second story this week, James, has us going to pretty much all around America and looking at police abuses. Now, you don't have to dig too deep to see police abuses, but a lot of it, of course, again, tragedies as they are. We're seeing just sort of a lot of sort of blood and guts and divide and conquer like we've been sort of talking about in the the summer of rage. But it's much more deep seated and it's almost that much more disgusting sort of how deep it goes. Police officers across the country misuse confidential law enforcement databases to get information on romantic partners, business associates, neighbors, journalists, and others for reasons that have nothing to do with the daily police work. A pretty massive Associated Press investigation has found. I'm only going to mention a little bit of this article, but like always, everything that we mention is always included down in the show notes. You can do more research for yourself. Criminal history and driver databases. Those are the two biggies that it's kind of talking about here. 
give officers critical information about people they encounter on the job. But the AP's review shows how those systems can also be exploited by officers who, motivated by romantic quarrels, personal conflicts, or voyeuristic curiosity, sidestep policies and sometimes the law by snooping. In the most egregious cases, officers have used information to stalk or harass or have tampered with or sold records they obtained. No single agency tracks how often the abuses happen nationwide and record-keeping inconsistencies make it impossible to know how many violations occur. But the AP, through records requests by sta- two state agencies rather, and big city police departments, found law enforcement officers and employees who misused databases were fired, suspended, or resigned more than 325 times between 2013 and 2015. They received reprimands, counseling, or lesser discipline in more than 250 incidences. And again, those are just ballpark spitball numbers that probably are very, very small. Among those punished, as this article will lastly kind of mention here, but again, I'll implore people to, to check out the link. AP also has a video that's, that's pretty sad and disgusting and kind of gets into one specific case of this sort of police stalking. An Ohio officer who pleaded guilty to stalking an ex-girlfriend who looked up information on her, a Michigan officer who looked up home addresses of women he found attractive, and two Miami-Dade officers who ran checks on journalists after he aired unflattering stories about the department. Now, I could have packed this entire episode 285 of New World next week with just these police state stories. So in Seattle... The Stranger, the newspaper there, actually just found out that the cops are using the CIA-funded Geophedia to track everybody's social media posts, not just Black Lives Matter, but anything that might concern the police state. And also in Washington, they are working on maybe a little bit of pre-crime as gun confiscation has been proposed in Washington. James? Yes, gun confiscation on the basis of accusations from family members or jilted ex-girlfriends or whoever. Oh, this guy's unstable. Please go, come take his guns. Um, and as a Canadian living in Japan, I've always been envious of the, the freedoms embedded in the Second Amendment, of well-regulated militia being necessary uh, to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed unless someone accuses you of something And then, you know, take away the guy's guns, right? Um, This is insanity. And unfortunately, hey, guess what, guys? No matter which way you vote in Selection 2016, the next president of the United States is going to be all on board with uh, terror lists, putting people on a terror watch list based on nothing whatsoever or whatever they feel like and taking your guns away. Both candidates have expressed strong approval of that. And of course, we had Trump going on big diatribes during the uh, debate talking about stop and frisk, stop and frisk. That's that's what we need in this country. We need to give the police more powers to do illegal and constitutional things. Yay! Go, go police state America. Um, it's not a good time to be living in the United States. And I think as we're about to get into, it's going to get even worse. Well, and I think just as, as long as we're talking about America's next top president, I mean, isn't it pretty amazing to see a lot of people who would have called themselves as part of the alternative media somehow over the course of 15 years go back to basically cheering Giuliani. I never would have really thought it would happen, but, you know, times times move pretty quickly. Uh, As far as the pre-crime proposition in Washington state, you are right. They actually use in the language of the proposal, again, which you can read fully yourselves, they mention, quote, dating partner. So imagine how short of a time that is. That's who could literally say, you did this thing, I'm taking away all your rights. And it starts with guns, and it'll just be the tiptoe from there. So these two states, James, talk a lot about Washington. We talk a lot about California. My state here in Oregon, we're kind of squeezed in the middle. And in a lot of ways, we're, we're not immune to it as just the sort of West Coast regulation police state monster kind of continues to grow and grow. What's a so-called super rich to do? Well, pick up the latest issue of The Hollywood Reporter, and they've got this article inside, which is basically a gigantic advertisement for places building what I'm just kind of calling panic mansions. Oscar winners, sports stars, and Bill Gates, he gets his own designation, see there. They're building lavish bunkers with amenities ranging from a swimming pool to bowling alley as global anxiety fuels sales and owners could be the next Adam and Eve. 
So again, this is coming from the Hollywood Reporter. Given the increased frequency of terrorist bombings and mass shootings and underlying sense of havoc fed by divisive election politics, it's no surprise that home security is going over the top and hitting luxurious new heights or rather new lows as the average depth of a new breed of safe haven that occupies thousands of square feet is 10 feet under or more. Those can, who can afford to pull out all the stops for the so-called preservation are doing so in a fashion that goes way beyond the submerged, corrugated metal units adopted by reality show preppers. So you got to make fun of people doing it on the grass, grassroots level to prepare for anything from nuclear bombings to drastic climate change events. So this article, which is pretty long and it's got some amazing kind of digital representations of these things because, as is noted, pretty much everybody involved signs huge non-disclosure agreements. But basically, paragraph by paragraph, they talk to different dudes who run these gigantic companies like Gary Lynch at Rising S Bunkers out of Texas or Mike Peters out of Utah-based Ultimate Bunker, where they're saying things like, anytime there's a turbulent political landscape, we see a spike in sales. Given this election is as turbulent as it is, we're gearing up for an even bigger spike. Other guys saying people are going for luxury to live underground because they see the future is going to be rough. Everyone I've talked to thinks we're doomed no matter who's elected. Bill Gates has huge shelters. Again, these are quotes coming from the guys running these companies. Bill Gates has huge shelters under every one of his homes in Rancho Santa Fe and Washington, in Washington state. His head of security visited us with us a couple years ago, and for these multi-billionaires, a few million is nothing. It's really just the newest form of insurance. Now, this is where it gets holly weird and fun. Many of the clients come knowing what movie secret door they would like duplicated, says Arizona-based creative home engineering president Steve Humble. They basically have people inspired by Indiana Jones and Batman and James Bond, or most specifically, Goonies where a popular access control device that requires a certain sequence of notes to be played on the piano to get the door opened. And they also note, at this moment, they're building something in private residence, which is a phone booth where you have to dial the correct number, where a sort of get smart door. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said giant ad. I think that ultimately this is a giant ad for all of the ultimate bunker and all these places that you're talking about that get all this free um, advertising space here. But it's more than just that. It isn't just an ad. You know, it's not like multi-billionaires are sitting here going through Hollywood Reporter looking for, you know, the latest technology. I think it's more an ad based at the public. Um, as part of a general campaign, part of the, the Summer of Rage, part of the building up of all this tension and the, uh, the inevitable release is going to be blood on the streets, guys. You better get ready for it in your own way because this is how the rich are going to do it. Um, and I've, I've seen at least half a dozen of these types of stories over the past couple of years. Panic rooms in New York City condos, panic mansions, uh, move into New Zealand, or these, these types of stories. And again, I think it's more directed at the public. Something's coming, guys. You better get ready for it. The purge is coming. And I think it's more like that type of, uh, you know, PR for, um, for rioting and looting and carnage and bloodshed. And I think this helps to predictively pro program the public for that. Well, it does, because it's so from the media standpoint, the Hollywood Reporter, it's not it's what they kind of refer to as a trade magazine. You don't just pick it up off the newsstand. It's really expensive. And the only people that actually buy it are the people in those industries. That's if you went into an agency, if you went to some media place, they're going to have it laying on their coffee table. And it's really expensive subscriptions to stuff like that. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year. Things like Hollywood Reporter or Variety or Billboard. So who it's selling to, James, in a lot of ways is actually kind of the middle tier because it ain't you and I. And it, of course, certainly isn't the Kissingers and the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds of the world either. It's a lot of the middle, the middle folks who, of course, they're going to be more susceptible to fear of chaos on the streets than the actual super rich who aren't going to really have to worry about any of it in the first place. So it's a funny form of advertising to the sort of upper middle kind of management class, I suppose. Or indoctrination, but yeah. Or indoctrination, but yeah, I think it's it's sort of, it's it's aimed at a level that, like I said, isn't us and isn't at the necessarily super rich as this article would kind of have us believe. Maybe in some ways it's like, I don't know if you ever as a kid looked at Sharper Image magazines, these sort of catalogs, and you saw this like whiz-bang, high-tech, really expensive stuff, 
that you basically coveted and sort of salivated over for no other reason than you were shown an image and told that you needed it. You know what else we really need? A little bit of good news. We've got the latest episode of Good News next week up. It's stories about funeral dogs, love hormones, and mindful moments. James, I've been doing Good News next week episodes usually every week. Sometimes it is difficult, as you may note, to actually put together a bit of good news. So uh, keep trying to do that in addition to all the other media from the monarchy. And let's once again invite people out there to submit their ideas for good news stories as well, because again, yes, it is good to keep track of that news and to not constantly be wallowing in the muck of the other types of stories that we cover. But on that note, we will be back to cover some more next week. So James, looking forward to it. Thanks, man.